right, today what we're going to be doing to continue on with our budget bow versus flagship shoot off is I'm going to go into kind of the first impressions of the bear paradigm. So we talked a little bit about this on the last podcast, but it doesn't necessarily give you the whole picture. You know, we talked, John talked a little bit about um, some of the more higher level things, but I think some of the stuff that we would be looking at on this bow, like when you first pick it up, is fit and finish. So one of the things that I noticed, I always look because I'm really hard on my bows, is at the cam. So one of the things that I've looked at um, in the past every year from being in the dirt and things like that is any sharp edges or anything on your cams, burrs, um, those can start to nick that serving, have a problem with the string, all that stuff. So um, on the outside, of the cam there's like some chatter marks from the machining the machining isn't what i would say the best on this but it's all on the outside it's not on the inside of the cams so that's what i'm looking at and everything looks fine but if i were to pay twice the price of this bow or if this was uh if this was bear's flagship model and they had that same sort of stuff i would probably be looking at that and saying man um, maybe I want to look at something else um, because if that's one of the main things that's going to cause damage, um, I, I would want them to pay a little bit more close attention. Um, another thing, and this is all just like really nitpicky stuff, but this is just me looking at the fit and finish of this bow. And it's $659, I'll, you know, that's their price on it for this ready to hunt package. We'll go into like the components and stuff like that. We've done podcasts on this in the past, but um, the limbs to me, they just, the, just the way that the finish is on them, there's definite like marks that you can see in them from like the lamination or whatever, however they make them. Um, they just don't seem very polished. So from like a, dollar for dollar standpoint it just seems kind of cheap um and that's uh, that's not me i, I don't want to make this sound like i'm hating on this bow um, i'm just telling you like what my first impressions are on because i'm i really only care about how they shoot i think the purpose of this podcast uh series what we're doing here is just simply to say if we were um building drag cars or something like that it all comes down to performance so if you've got um, a rat rod that looks like a piece of crap that has all the money in the motor and you've got something that looks really nice and it's you know not as fast but man it's really cool to drive around like i think that that's the whole point of this kind of like what i'm going for so maybe this thing looks like a turd but if it can perform just as well uh, we know that it's going to kill deer uh, but we just want to see how it performs on these long shots um, all that stuff and it's just a, a fun thing to do so it's kind of uh, you know one of these rat rod budget build type things and that's the way that i'm looking at it that's the way that i'm seeing it. so i'm not hating on this bow i'm just telling you that's that's what i'm seeing so some of the cool features on this bow is it does have like the pick rail um for the integrated components both on the front and back so for a rest and a sight and the sight does come with a pretty nice light um but one of the things that i think holds these bows back when they do this in a ready to hunt package is where on the surface it seems like a great idea um, it just is a really cheap looking and feeling sight. And so for someone who's really going to hunt, really going to use this bow, um, you know, that's the first thing that I would upgrade would be the sight because it just seems like, you know, any sort of hard fall or anything like that's going to damage it. Um, the draw cycle on this bow, uh, cause we're running out of time here is really good. Like I, I, it's nice and smooth. It cams over pretty nicely. Um, it is a great drawing bow uh, shoots the vibration isn't too bad um, other things that are in this riser it's a caged riser for uh, one of the the first times I think bears done that on a non flagship bow as well as on the back it has uh, a threaded spot for uh, stabilizer so 
it, it's already got that so you don't have to figure out where to put the stabilizer how to do that on the back um, and then just one more thing it comes with a pretty decent quiver uh, for the money uh, of all the components on this bow like the quiver is the one thing that I would keep and out of the box for 650 bucks I don't think you can beat it really excited to see where this podcast goes where this shoot off goes and uh, that's all the time we got for today uh, thanks for listening Definitely check these out, um, especially some of the non-ready-to-hunt models because there's not a lot different between the Alaskan XT and this one. Sorry, I'm out.